Uh, thanks, guys. So I'm standing by with Coach Jebia. Now, Coach, I heard you and your assistants uh, calling for a lot of ball screens. I think you're a little upset you weren't getting them. Uh, what do you think uh, adjustment they can, and what improvement can they give to your offense? Well, I, I, our offense, yeah, I just think um, we've been attacking a lot against their, their transit or their pressure, their press. So we've been scoring a lot that way. We haven't really run a half-court offense that, that much so far. Um, but I just think us breaking their zone and setting ball screens within the zone and attacking the middle, I think, will help us more in the second half. In the past, if you wanted to bring your favorite craft beer back to your house, you would have had to go to the brewery with a growler, it looks like this one, and fill it up from the draft and then carry it home with you. Uh, but now with the passage of this new law, you could go to your local grocery store and pick up a couple cans or bottles in the near future. One key to today's game is going to be the Eagles' defense. AU is ranked in the top four in the conference in overall scoring defense, opposing field goal percentage, and opposing three-point field goal percentage. And they're going to have to keep that run of strong play going against a Terrier team that is 0-10 when they score less than 60 points, but 5-0 when they score more than 60. Scott Sargrad, uh, and I'm the Managing Director for K-12 Education Policy here at the Center for American Progress. Yeah, so the issue is really about of how much resources low-income schools get compared to their higher-income peers. And this is an issue that uh, we've been looking into for a long time, and we were interested in how parent donations actually contributed to some of this problem. And I think we know that a well-rounded education is critical for students to be successful in college and career and in life. And we know that those kind of programs are less likely to be in lower income schools and in districts that don't have significant resources. There are other schools who need additional resources and one option is to go and advocate for more resources from the district and from the state for all schools. And so that these schools that serve lower income students do have that baseline level of resources too. Yeah, there are a few recommendations that we make in the paper that some districts have already taken action on. So one is to create what are often called equity funds for school districts, where some portion of parent donations come into a central pool that is then distributed to lower income schools that might not be getting donations from their parent teacher organizations. Um, another example of a, a policy is to restrict the use of the parent donations to say that they can't be used to pay for core staff, for example, and make sure that the district is providing what every school needs based on the students there, not based on how much the parents can raise. We will not go away. Where President Trump goes, protesters seem to follow. That remained true today, the Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC. With the president expected to speak at 10 a.m., protesters set up across the street to make their presence felt and voice their displeasure with the president's policies. So he's made statements that are homophobic. He's made statements that oppress women. He has um, made many statements that polarize people from many different areas because he's racist and he just doesn't stand for anything that we do. Immigrants make America great! The protest focused on the president's policies as a whole rather than any one particular piece of legislation. Some were Women's March participants, while others just happened to live around the National Harbor area and wanted to support the movement. Well, actually, I live on National Harbor, and I, I was going to ignore all the crazy, you know, and just go for my morning walk and go back. And then when I was out, they asked me to join this protest, and I figured, why not? I was down on the mall for the women's protest, and uh, so I'm like, sure, I'll go over there and see what's going on. So that's how I ended up here. I really didn't come to be here, but since this is my neighborhood, this is where I live, I'm here. These protesters drew the attention of Trump supporters and conference attendees who created a counter-movement under the label of Blacks for Trump. For District Wire News, I'm Dan Lignato. Google's new update is seeing some controversy. Google released an update for Google Maps that would allow users to share location information with each other. However, this does open the question regarding data privacy and who has access to that location data. While Google touts this update for its ability to help with planning events, some think that this data could end up in the wrong hands. The first is that they may share them with state actors or commercial actors, which is totally legal under their terms of service. Um, but it's something that's fairly opaque to the end user. Most people don't actually read the terms of service, so we don't know where those data are going to go. The second concern is that um, commercial uh, data might be stolen by criminal actors, which is exactly what happened in the case of Yahoo, which had uh, 1.5 billion data breaches announced in 2016. 
Despite these privacy concerns, others think that this could be beneficial for parents keeping track of their kids or for those who are in unsafe conditions. It's a good way for parentals, for friends, God forbid something were to happen. Google Maps is widely popular for navigation as cell phones have replaced car-based GPS systems. For District Wire News, I'm Dan Lignato. Good afternoon, I'm Dan Lignato, joined today by Nick Papadis as the Eagles and the Tribe both coming in off victories for the Eagles. Their first home win came on Wednesday against UMBC. They look to make it two in a row today. As for William & Mary coming in, winners of five in a row looking to make it an even six. Yeah, as you said, the Eagles coming off a, a really big win, a commanding victory over the Lafayette Lepers by 25 points. Uh, some good contributions from the usual suspects, Cecily Carl and Emily Kiniston uh, there for the Eagles. On the other hand, you said the Crusaders coming off that defeat um, up against Army West Point. Uh, but they played it close, kept it uh, single digits, just an eight-point loss, and big performances for their usual suspects as well, uh, Lauren Manis and Infinity Thomas Wahid. Former NFL quarterback Tim Tebow's new career is off to a fast start. In his first at-bat playing professional baseball, Tebow hit a two-run home run to left field. In his attempt to transition from football to baseball, Tebow is currently playing for the Columbia Fireflies in the New York Mets minor league system. The Fireflies went on to win the game 14-7. Tonight, Oklahoma City Thunder guard Russell Westbrook will have two shots at making history. Westbrook needs just six assists to average a triple-double for the regular season, a feat that has only been accomplished by Oscar Robertson in 1962. If Westbrook gets a triple-double tonight, he would have 42 for this year, which would set the record for most in a single season. The Thunder travel to Phoenix to take on the Suns at 10 o'clock. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is calling for new economic sanctions and other measures on North Korea. At a special session of the UN Security Council, Tillerson asked other countries to suspend diplomatic relations with the communist regime. This comes after the Trump administration said it was willing to negotiate directly with North Korea over ending its nuclear weapon program. A manhunt is underway for a prisoner that has escaped the Clifton Perkins Hospital Center in Howard County, Maryland. Police are searching for David Watson, who was serving time for attempting to murder a police officer. Watson was being transferred to the medical center for treatment when he escaped custody. Police are searching the area with patrol cars, canine units, and a helicopter. They're asking if anyone has more information on Watson's location to immediately call 911. Demonstrators are planning to fill the National Mall this Saturday for the People's Climate March. The environmental activists are marching in opposition to the Trump administration's climate policies. They're calling for a rapid reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and toxic pollution. The march will begin at 9 a.m. at the Capitol Building, make its way around the White House, and conclude at the Washington Monument.